Hi, this is Randall Allen Loy. I'm a reproductive medicine specialist from Orlando, Florida. And today we're gonna to be talking about IVF. This is part four of a four part series. We are going to be talking about IVF much more in the future, but these are the basics of IVF. And today we're gonna to be talking about the risks and complications of in vitro fertilization. First a word, I had this very well-educated couple from Boston who came to see me last year, and I was telling them the things I'm about to tell you, and at the end of the conversation, they said, we're not willing to accept those risks. We want a perfect baby, and if it could have problems, we don't want that. Or if my pregnancy could be complicated, I don't want that. And so I said, IVF is not for everybody, that you have to assess the risks and the benefits for yourselves. In medicine, we have this concept that the benefits of something must outweigh the risks. And to their minds, the benefits of having a baby did not outweigh the risks of having that baby. So what are the risks of IVF? We've talked about IVF, the four steps. We have to stimulate the ovaries. We have to collect the egg cells. The sperm and egg have to meet outside the body in a Petri dish. And then the resulting embryos have to go back into the uterus. So step one, ovulation induction. We're stimulating the ovaries. Now, there is about a five to 10% cancellation rate depending upon the clinic. So you might overstimulate, which is bad, or understimulate. If there are only one or two chances for eggs, that may mean cancellation. One of the things that we really worry about in our field is so-called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. We call that OHSS. Overstimulation means that the ovaries can become enlarged and tender and multicystic. There can be nausea and vomiting. There can be proteinaceous fluid accumulation in the abdominal cavity. There can be compromised kidney function. And very rarely, there can even be blood clot problems such as heart attack or stroke. Now that happens much less than 1% of the time. In fact, the heart attack or stroke probably one in 100,000. So that's something we're always mindful of. Finally, there may be the uncommon to rare allergic reaction to one or more of the medications that we're using in the IVF process. So what are the risks of the second step where we collect the eggs? We have to place a needle across the upper vaginal sidewall and that needle possibly could do damage to the intestine or to a major blood vessel. Those things happen about one in 10,000 or less. In our clinic, for example, 27 plus years into this, we've not had a single emergency after thousands of cycles. So what about step three? Step three is where the eggs and sperm have to meet in the Petri dish. If the sperm is normal, there's less than a 5% chance for lack of fertilization. In most cases, we know that the sperm is normal or abnormal and will then perform ICSI, direct sperm injection, if we have to. Step four. Step four is where we place the embryos back to your uterus. And in step four, there's probably about a one in 1,000 chance or less for an infection. We will give you an antibiotic both prior to, during, and after the embryo transfer, and you will have been on an antibiotic as well prior to the eggs being harvested. So the infection rates are very low. After step four comes that critical period of waiting for the pregnancy test. And one of the reasons we don't wanna place back multiple embryos is because multiple babies can develop. I'll never forget a case a few years ago, a lady from Central Florida came to us and she had two nice looking embryos and one that seemed to be on the way out. It just didn't seem very promising. She said, well, I'll take all three back. And in fact, we did an ultrasound a few weeks later and she had four babies. So one of those embryos had split and the others had also taken. So she had three beautiful little girls and an ornery little boy. And I think I knew from which embryo he came. Anyway, the risks of multiple gestation are real. I don't wanna make light of that because Women who have multiple babies are much more likely to have miscarriage, bleeding problems during pregnancy, preterm labor and delivery, and a cesarean section. All those can be real problems for the mom as well as the babies, and those can be lifelong problems. So we try to avoid these days placing back more than one embryo through the age of 36 years, unless there's a qualitative problem with the embryos, and then we might place back two. In patients older than 36, we might place back two or even more. Let's talk a little bit about birth defects. In a very nice compilation of studies, a so-called meta-analysis, the risk for birth defects in babies born through IVF was 1.67 times the background rate. So there is a slight increased chance for birth defects in that series of studies. 
So what are those defects? There might be a little hole in the partition between the heart chambers, a septal defect. There might be cleft lip with or without cleft palate. There could be narrowing of the esophagus, the food tube that goes from the mouth to the stomach. Or there could be also narrowing of the anal area. So about 1.67 times the background rate, slightly increased. So what are the other risks? We know that women who are pregnant with IVF babies have a 2.5 fold higher chance for bleeding at some point during pregnancy. Other risks we worry about, of course, are high blood pressure disorders of pregnancy. There may be preterm rupture of membranes. There can be gestational diabetes mellitus. And one that seems to persist in various studies is that these babies, singleton babies, tend to be smaller and certainly twins and triplets small for gestational age. There are increased chances that the babies could have problems during that first month of life that's so critical, and some of these problems continue throughout the life of the individual. So IVF seems to be somewhat problematic with the risks varying between approximately 1.2 for the need for induction of labor in the IVF mother to 2.5 for some bleeding disorder in pregnancy. So we've come to realize, and just very recently, that some of those risks to the baby and to the mom might be alleviated by freezing all of the embryos and putting them back in a subsequent cycle. Why? Because in the IVF setting, the lining is very thick to the uterus and it reflects an estrogen level that's very, very high. So in the next cycle, we can approximate a normal uterine thickness, maybe eight to 12 millimeters in thickness and an estrogen level that would be in keeping with the normal cycle. And if we put an embryo back into the uterus in that cycle, it seems that a lot of the risks go away. So I anticipate that that's a trend to follow in IVF. Watch for it. The best clinics are already starting to do that, freezing all the embryos, putting them back in another cycle. Well, life is not without risk. The very fact that you're watching this on a computer means that there are beta particles hitting you in the face right now. Low risk. IVF, more risk. But just put it all in perspective. If the benefits of having a baby, and maybe grandchildren someday, which are more fun, outweigh the risk of IVF, then go for IVF. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any comments or questions, please write me. If they're of a more personal nature, please use the email address below. And I'm going to actually take those questions and place those into future episodes. Now, I really appreciate the fact that you've subscribed. If you've not subscribed already, please do so. Tell your friends about this and tell them that we're having a pretty good time here at the Infertility Channel. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week.